Welcome to Brew and Review with Mike and Jake from Orange Cactus Coffee. Join them as they put coffees and brew methods to the test. Thank you for joining us for Brew and Review 4. Mike and I put to the test the St. Anthony Industries Phoenix version 2 dripper along with the filibuster decanter. And we also put the Barsetto Tripresso to the test with some of PT's coffee, the blue label from Columbia that was a gift from Jeremy Davis. Thank you so much, Jeremy. And let's go ahead and jump right in with our music. All right, well, let's hear it. Re, re, review, copy, review, re, re, review, copy, review, re, re, review, copy, review, re, re, review, copy, review. Hi, welcome to Brew and Review 4 with Orange Cactus Coffee. I am Jake Goebel, and with me as always is the incredible Mike Kincaid. Mike, what have you got for us today? I don't have it. Perfect. We so this is what we, we've been no, waiting for, it. the filibuster. The oh, you forgot the coffee. I got the should we just start all over or should I pause it here? Or should I just keep it running? So Mike is going to head upstairs and he's going to grab the coffee. And this is what you've got today. You've got not only a podcast, but we also have a YouTube channel where we record these podcasts and we make videos and we sling them out there. We try not to do a whole lot of editing just for workflow to make it easier on ourselves and to give you, I guess, a little bit more of an unfiltered look at the Orange Cactus Coffee experience that is Mike and Kate and Jake Goble. Boom. There it is. Thank you. So we were coming over this way a little bit more. That's it right there. Perfect. So Mike and I um, love coffee. We love drinking coffee and we love tasting new coffees and reporting back to you. And part of tasting new coffees and reporting back to you means having different brew methods. So it, not everything is brewed the exact same. Last week, we talked on our podcast how we've been waiting for the filibuster decanter from St. Anthony Industries to use the Phoenix version two brewer on this it. guy right here so it finally showed up uh no more nasty messages from me on facebook uh to saint anthony industries but it comes in it, we've talked about it before but it comes in the sleek box that's it right there it's kind of a metal ring a, a larger ring up top side a smaller ring down below and then three metal kind of like pipes or rods extend down um they they come out like kind of a triangle then they have little little uh, balls at the end that keep it from moving sliding around your mug your decanter whatever it is you're brewing into they also have some unique filters, unlike the Chemex filter, which is like one sheet folded in fourths, and then you kind of got to split it open, throw it in there, and then you end up with three layers of paper on one side and one layer of paper on the other side. These are kind of cut into some circle shapes or kind of circle shapes with a with a little rectangular or a rom, rhombus, rhomboid, cut out the middle of it. What that does is this. It gives you two sides, two layers on each side. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more of an even brew extraction is what I would, is what I would assume is what I would guess. What Mikey was waiting for is the filibuster, which is this large glass device. It is a, it's tall. It is double walled. It has a little cap on top that you can um, keep the heat trapped inside. It's got a little spout on it, no handles. So is, it is a handleless um, decanter, unlike, you know, maybe the Hario decanter or something else that you're accustomed to using. And similar to, I get the a Chemex and a Kalita, no handle, but this one is double walled so double you can wall. touch it. There's no, Handmade. there's no like grip around it or anything like that. It's just, it's all glass. It's pretty sleek looking. It is a pretty um, decanter. It is a pretty brewer. It looks all very sleek and minimalistic. Yeah. Minimal? Minim minimal? Minimally? Minimize. 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 It, it, that's the idea. And then, of course, as we've discussed before, uh, the Phoenix a 70 um, is known because of its 70 degree angle. 
instead of it's, you know, as opposed to or compared to a 60 degree with the there Hario. With the Hario. So they claim that that um, does a couple things, but mainly it also allows the brew bed to act as another form of a filter. So as y- you brew, um, you know, the grounds themselves will trap small particles and give you a, a, an even more, that much more cleaner cup. Even more that much more. Even, I love it. Even cleaner of that much more. All right. I love it. So one of the drawbacks to the Phoenix V70 was if you're watching the video, you can see this paper filter hangs pretty low underneath the filter or the the brewer itself into the brew device. So you can see if you were using a mug, it's going to the tip of the the brew cone is going to sit inside your coffee. Uh, that is not good. That's not what you want. That's not going to give you the it's best It's not designed cup. to be used with a single cup. And so, in fact, yeah, it's designed for the decanter. It is designed for the decanter. And because of that, they've recently come out with a ceramic version that is designed to sit atop the cup, just like your, the V60. Nice. Yeah, that keeps it up higher. So Nice. Very as, cool. As far as I can tell. So it, we're going to make coffee in that today. We are also going to make coffee in this. What is that? The Barsetto Tripresso. And I realized as I was editing the old podcast, I called it Tripesso. So many times, I just wanted to reach in and slap myself. So you were not the only one thinking, this guy is an idiot. I wish I could punch him in the face. Uh, mm. it's, me too. Me too. I think Great. the same thing when I hear me. Tripresso. So here's the Barsetto Tripresso. It came from Sandra. We talked about it last show, I believe. We are going to give this one away uh, when we're done with it here. We're done experimenting with it. But it, it ha- it's two pieces here. Um, two piece. Two pieces. It's a two piece. You brew into soup. a to-go cup. It is designed to be a portable coffee maker. There is uh, a little pod that you can put a K-cup in. Or you can put your little brew – There, it also comes with a little brew basket uh, that you can put coffee in just like a Keurig machine. And then there's a little – was it a little stabber there on the bottom? So whether you have alive coffee or dead coffee, you can make co- to-go coffee yeah. into this, the Barsetto Tripresso. So we're going to try and make coffee on both of these and see and see what's what and see and see what up. So maybe why I start brewing, you want to talk about what we got? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Have, absolutely. I guess unless I was you gonna, did why I was gone. No, I, I was going to talk about that and then get to brewing because that way I can give a play-by-play of what you're doing. I'll do both. As well. Okay, perfect. So we've got two brew methods. So Because um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this right here. I was totally geeked and freaked out this week a package showed up for me and i did not know that this was coming it and yes you did no i didn't you just forgot okay i forgot jeremy davis thank you thank you thank you i don't think you knew i thought the coffee. i thought you were making coffee I, not talking. <laughs> well, what, I, what are you doing? I got to keep you honest. So <laughs> you knew that there was something potentially on its way, but you had no idea what it was. And I, I wasn't sure where it was Because I don't was, let you touch the comments on going. YouTube. Yes, that's true. That's true. I didn't know whether it was coming to my house or what was going on, but this blue box shows up. Christmas in the mail. It is from PT's Coffee, established 1993, a roasting company. It is, I want to say... It's about three inches tall. I want to say it's about uh, five and a half inches wide and about a foot long. So it looks like a smaller shoebox, but it's blue. It's got this goat, uh, our goat from Ethiopia design on. It's got coffee cherries. It's got a whole bunch of cool artwork on it. And then once you open it up, it's kind of like a cardboard mailer, meaning um, not like a white, uh, white, Mm-hmm. screen printed mm-hmm. one it's more more typical typical that you would when you think of kind of cardboard so brown on the inside comes with this card pt's coffee and this is the coffee that's inside it it's la palma y el tucan blanca cano lactic honey from colombia the farm is via elena and el piet 
Something along those lines. Perfect. I like the fact that they put the altitude on here in feet, 4,265 feet, because we don't use meters out here. I'm sorry. The world does. um, I know the world does. Meters are better. The metric system is better. I'm not saying it's not. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying communicate with your audience. Flavor notes of strawberry, honey, and kiwi. I'm going to read this real quick. This uniquely processed micro lot bursts with sweet aromas of strawberry, raisin, and honey with a prominent fresh strawberry flavor in the brewed cup. A refreshingly juicy body, that is mouthfeel, juicy is mouthfeel, and golden delicious sweetness lead to a captivating aftertaste of kiwi and cocoa nib. Sounds sounds good. It was great. And there's a picture of Grandma Kano or somebody on there. Blooming. On the postcard there. Oh, sorry. Yes. So Mike, um, has he pre-wet the filter. Uh, he poured out the water that was inside the decanter. And now he is blooming. So he puts about blooming. twice the amount of water. You like three times. I do three times. So if he's, he's got 22 grams of yes. coffee in there, ground to about a pour over um, fineness. It's kind of like what you would use with a V60 yeah, or a start Kalita. There. That's where I started. It's been, it's worked well for us. And he adds 66 grams of water. He lets it sit for about 30 seconds. You didn't give a stir this time, but that's okay. Kind of lets the coffee off gas and it smells absolutely incredible while he is brewing here. And how many pours are you going to do, Mike? Yeah. So what I do with uh, the Phoenix here that I found uh, pretty good is I don't stir, as you mentioned. I don't think there's a need for it because of how kind of centric and centered and yeah. isolated all the grounds are. Um, I do three pours. So I do roughly, you know, 60 for the bloom, and then I take it to 160, 260, and then finish at 360. Perfect. So three 100-gram pours. Awesome. Awesome. So while he's doing that, inside this box is a cylinder, another cardboard cylinder, and it it fits perfectly. If you can, uh, you can't he- hear it, but you can check it out on the on the YouTube's. It fits perfectly. No, inside I think they can't hear it. They can't the see it. Okay, you can't uh, see it. Thank you. You can just hear it, and it is very cool. So now this cylinder has got the sticker on it, the same thing that's on the back of the card. Mike is doing his third and final second. second pour his second pour so this is pt's coffee blue label and you can slide it apart it's very cool it's very special and as soon as you pop the top off boom there's a sticker in there so what? cool i left this hugs at your here. heartstrings doesn't it really it? does because i i was going to put this on my sticker collection wall there but i decided to wait and let you guys he- see it hear it here here's <laughs> the it. sticker here's Here, the feel sticker. it there it is. Let you fill it the same way that I was feeling it. But it's like a, a tube, like you would send a poster or something in the mail out of cardboard, but it's screen printed. It's very cool. It's got a dove with a coffee cherry. I don't know if that is a reference to the Noahic Covenant or not, but it's cool just the same. Inside is a clear bag with an off, uh, off-gas, one-way valve to off-gas. It smells delicious. It's got the little um, twisty, tie, turny thingamabobber. But I would say that um, if you were going to hang on to it very long, it's probably best to put it in a jar or something like that from the from these types of... Um, but you want to keep it in the cylinder. It's You so want to keep it in the cylinder. It's true. You probably could use this for something else when you're done. Yeah, you could. Yeah. I am going to use it because great packaging does not get thrown away. So anyhow, that is PT's Coffee. This is the blue label. Jeremy Davis is our hero. Mm -hmm. And Mike is almost done brewing this up. So we are drinking out of Mug Mug mugs. We have one left, I think. I think you can still buy one from our website. Or is there two left? We have we two if somebody really wants one, one listed. Okay, we have one, one left. maybe two. One Keep, is left. I mean that guy, yeah. Yes. And we are drinking also out of our not neutral smoke cortado glasses. We are clearing, cleansing our palates with this sparkling water. That's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. It gives you a fresh start, it gives you something kind of kind of clean to start with. So Mikey is now using the barsetto um in his techniques here but well, we're improvising for not being all right somewhere so he's a trash the, can through the cap through the cap on that there, there filibuster That's um it. 
the V60, V70, sorry, V7, the Phoenix 70 version 2. V2. The a little V2, cheaper than the original. A little cheaper, a little, little more compact, a little smaller, a little less kind of industrial. It looks a little smaller. Yeah, it does. It seems a little simpler. But it's cheaper. All right. So what's cool, though, about the filibuster, runs about 40 bucks, um, is, yes, double walled. So it will keep your brew, you know, a little bit hotter for longer. But the spout is not uh, blocked by the lid, which, you know, yes, it lets a little of the heat steam out. But then you don't have to take the lid off when you're ready to pour. So you ready to have some? I'm ready. So this is a honey processed coffee. Um, I'm not getting strong blueberries to the face here, but I am getting a little bit of strawberry. I don't know if I'm getting any kiwi as an aftertaste, though I can see kind of subtle cocoa nibs. What I can tell you is that it's not very acidic. You're not going to get this real tartness kind of in the sides of your mouth. You're not going to feel like you're being attacked. No this, assaultedness. This would be an excellent coffee to introduce, introduced, to introduce to someone that is starting their journey into specialty coffee, wants to drink coffee without cream and sugar, wants to drink it neat, as I like to say, um, just just regular. You are going to find a tremendous amount of flavor in this cup. Sweetens as it cools. It's just uh, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's very good. Castillo, Colombia. It's strawberry, honey, and kiwi is what you were saying, right? I can see a little bit of the strawberry. It's got the berryness. And I think a lot of times when it's not overly berry, you kind of just say strawberry because it's kind of a strawberry. muter. A muter it's, not a, it, it's not a blueberries it's not, to the face. It's not, what, it's not. What's that? It's not that? It's not blueberries to the face, but it is good. Are you hoping for that? No, no. Or in your wishful thinking, sure. For a honey, honey oh. processed, I did not expect blueberries to the face. I expected strawberry sweetness, mm. a juicy mouthfeel. I got that. And I also expected a smooth finish. And I'm getting all of those things here. What ratio did you use for this, Mike? 16. 16? 16. 16 to 1. 16 to 1. So I wouldn't be opposed to trying this at maybe a 20 to 1. I found that... Some of the fruity flavors are enhanced with a little lighter ratio or a little weaker ratio. Sometimes you get a little bit more flavor there. The other thing that was, I think, worthy of note it's cool. is that this excellent coffee came in an eight and a half ounce bag, I think, which was a little bit unusual, but probably nice. I've heard some folks complain. I'm looking at, um, was it Chris or Jared? One of them on the... Uh, Cat and Cloud podcast. We haven't mentioned it much lately. I've stopped listening, I'm afraid. I have to confess. But they mentioned they would like smaller bags. They'd be able to, they'd be, they, they'd be like to, they would like to buy smaller oh, not bags. Not smaller offerings. Sample. So yeah. not 12 ounces, maybe not 10 ounces, maybe not like a three ounce sample bag, but like somewhere between six and 10. You know, something along those lines. And this eight and a half is right there in the middle. For me, I normally like the 12 ounce bags, and I was thinking about going with like a five pound bag. I've been drinking so much coffee and I've been running it through the espresso. I think machine it depends so much. On, on how much you use. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, this is the I blue label. Did you talk about that? It looks like a PT's little bit. coffee. I they, don't know the difference between the different labels, but if you'd like to yeah, well, jump on that. I, I don't know either. All I do know from what I can glean on their website is they have a blue label section where they kind of offer, you know, their specialty, high end, more expensive coffees. And they've got several available. All are eight ounces and they come in the special packaging. So I see it more as kind of like if you want to treat, you know, something special or you want to gift it as Jeremy did for us. Um, thank you, Jeremy. Yes, thank you very much. It, it's really cool. Um, they also, this particular one they offer in standard packaging, which comes in a 12 ounce, uh, bag. I think it runs right around 2350, um, for that 12 ounces. This was 18 and then, you know, plus shipping unless you hit their threshold, which I think was 25 bucks for free shipping. So we've talked about, we'll talk about that on the next big show, but Mikey wants to come up with a number to get free shipping. Oh, well, I'm, you know, it's always curious how different companies, you know, handle shipping. Do they make you pay it? Do they pay it? Do they split it? Do they hide it in an add on like, hey, buy this and we'll throw in free shipping? You know, it has to be dealt with somewhere. Yeah. And I think it's nice on the consumer side when you feel like you don't have to at least 
factor in shipping, maybe it's not free technically. Maybe it's rolled into the price, but at least you don't have to then add that, right? When you're ready to check out, oh, 30 bucks. Oh, it's six bucks more for shipping. You know, it's just all included. So I, I, I like the including, but ultimately I don't like, well, I guess the feedback is, is that been, I, show me the difference. Show me the difference. Now we always eat some of the shipping cost. Like today, we sent out a coffee, an order for coffee, and it, it, it came to $6.98. That's what the shipping was. We charged six for it. We ate the 98 cents. But ultimately, if were we a profitable company, the consumer pays for everything. They were not profitable at the moment. I mean, we lose money every year after year after year. That takes no great strength or no great business acumen to be able Startup to do costs. that. But once you start trying to actually be profitable, you have to make money. And the way you make money is by providing a service or a product that customers want to buy. When they buy it, you sell it for more than it costs to um, get the raw materials, manufacture it into something that's worth selling, and then actually ship. So... On to the Barsetto here. Let's see what it's got. Let's see what it's got. I am getting a little bit of the kiwi in the aftertaste. In the aftertaste? Well, that's what they say. Captivating aftertaste. That doesn't mean that it's there. Of kiwi and copo. Copo nib. Let me see the coffee there. Oh, I needed a spoon. Copo nib. How am I going to do this? Well, we should probably hit the water again with some heat. Oh, yeah. You know what? Through the magic of video editing, we'll be right back. All right, we are magically back. Mike has got the instructions for the Barsetto (sighs) Tripresso. We've got a spoon. We've got coffee. We are going to. We're gonna. We're gonna play our flavors. We're gonna play our flavors. I'm really enjoying it. It's got a nice aftertaste. Just to summarize on the uh, Phoenix Brew, it's excellent. I would drink this every day, all day. Sometimes there's coffees to me that when they're real light. Or even some natties. I really enjoy naturals, but I can't drink it cup after cup just because it's a little too intense. I could drink blueberries of the face all day, every day. Yeah, not me. I like it in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. But in between, no. Um, Otherwise, I think this is very balanced, very sweet, and it's an excellent coffee. I'm definitely getting the honey sweetness. Okay, you need me to read instructions? Yeah, I'm filling up this little basket full of coffee here. Um... So there's a little basket, right, that acts in place of the K-cup. Yes. And so what would you get in there? 18? How much? I don't much? know yet. He has no idea. 15. Okay, that's good. Oh. Is it going to It fit? can only do, what, 8 ounces? So you might, you might be careful with that. Might need a little bit. What are you doing? Here. What are you doing now? There's a little. You got a problem? Put a little too much in. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot. I'm supposed to give you a play-by-play. He put the little basket on the scale to check the weight again, and now he's taking more coffee out of the uh, the little basket because the lid won't fit. So the lid is the lid fitting now. You maybe got not, what 14 grams? Not very well. I think we're going to end up under 14. Okay. Well, we'll go less. We're going to end up with 13. Is what we're going to do here. We're going to go 13. I thought you gave me the instructions. I did give you the instructions. We're at 13, though. Impale the top capsule? Yeah, well, you're, you're probably reading the K-cup side. Go back to the coffee side. Oh, it doesn't say how much water to add. It does not, but we are going to, we know how much water to add. Oh, we do. I think there's a limit on what this thing can okay, take. Okay, I've got it. Well, what's 13? What's oh, a good ratio? What's a good ratio? 13 grams we should do we do 20 let's do 20 to 1 let's do 20 to 1 ratio with at 13 grams so i think we should try 60 we can't keep it the same for a comparison okay we can keep it the same do we have enough room because you have, have no 13 idea. that 13. would be 208 208 right yeah that's 16 to 1 okay let's keep it the same if we can okay so it's screwed in the bottom now we're going to screw this part together it doesn't screw. It just rests. Oh, it just rests? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I'd have been there for a while. <laughs> just, there actually, go. wait. Maybe it does. Try it again. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to put 208 grams of water in here. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. And then, yeah, then you put the capsule on and then you pump. So do 208. 
Okay. He's standing to attention. Just filling it up. Water straight off the boil. Third wave water, of course. Nothing else. Uh, it says, okay. After you do that, fill hot water. And then press each 2 to 3 S seconds. Caution. Too high pressure may break, cause capsule break. What? Too high pressure. Oh, may cause capsule break. Don't break the capsule. Okay. All right. Oh, Ow. don't don't spill your water. What's going on here? Ow, just, what do you, just fine. Take I'm your fine. headphones off. I'm fine. You okay. look cool without them. There you go. There you go. Look at you're free. All right. Two to three second presses. Let's see. There's nothing really to see, unfortunately. Except I feel like I'm in eyesight line if this thing blows up hot coffee to the face. It's doing something. I can hear it. It's brewing. Can you can you lift it? I think you go Are you coordinated enough to press and lift? I think if you go slow, like I've got infusion right now. There's water in there. We've you got you've got infusion? infusion? Oh, you're got okay. Infusion right now. You're doing a little bloom phase. You're doing a little bloom phase. We're just saturating all Two, three, 13 pumps. grams. All right. Every Yeah, there you go. Can you, Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> Come on, boy. Play your flavor. Play, Play your flavor. There it. Oh, ooh. Ooh. This is not looking good. Yeah, put it down. Put <laughs> Press. It down. <laughs> yeah, that's not. There you go. Give it another one. I like that. All right, one more prep. <laughs> that's you. Are you hearing that? Yeah. Put it right in front of the mic. There you go. That's fine. Oh, no, don't do it. Oh. Can you still feel the pressure? Is it hard to press? Excuse you. Is it hard to press? I can hear it going through. It's going... <laughs> it's not like a little guy in there yelling. <laughs> it's... Oh, that's good stuff. So you can feel pressure? What do you got going? A little bit. A little, little bit, bit of pressure, he feels. All right. Nothing like the arrow press. I got nothing to say. Just like you enjoy you have Jake. You go slow. Jake, maybe you can put... Like you have to you, tell yourself to go slow. Do you have to have your leg up like that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's better. All right. Well, just... Oh. I think that's it. I think your well is run dry. All right. All right. Good pumping. Good job, Jake. So they've got this little... Um, oh, I just spilled it on the sticker. All right. He's getting himself together. They've got this what? What are you saying to us? This little drip tray. Oh, nice. So you take it out and you just set it in the tray. So functionally, it seemed like it worked. How much liquid we got? We don't know. Yeah. We oh. should probably measure it. Somehow. You know, that's easy. Oh, I'm just going to do this. Watch this. That's how I'm going to do it. All right, I'm going to see what we got. Put 208 in, shooting for a 16 to 1, so we can compare it to uh, the Phoenix brew. And uh, let's cleanse the, cleanse the palate. A little seltzer palate. water? Yeah, a little, little sparkling water, a little seltzer water. Mm. So before we taste it, my prediction is that it's not going to be as good. I just, that's just my thought, that cramming all that coffee in that little basket, you're going to limit its ability to extract. I'm getting 187 out. Okay. What is, how many ounces? That's pretty that? good because... 208 in, 187 out. Yeah, it's, you almost lost around 30, which is double. 13 grams, holds yeah. about double its weight, give yeah. or take. I don't know. What is that, 187? What do you mean, what is that? In, in ounces, I'm dividing it by 28. Oh. So, just under 7 ounce. Okay. I think they said it was an eight ounce maker, didn't they? Yeah. Or we said eight ounces. Yeah, was a I good... think we said eight ounces. You could probably could have put a little bit more water in there. Yeah, if you go a little At bit. Thirteen grams. I think a twenty to one ratio is where you want to sit. We made it a little stronger, went a little lower because we wanted to compare to the the brew methods here. Yes. So, all right, here you go. What do I give you some of this? Here, put it in there. You put it all Just in. Put it in that right there. There you go. And then I'm just going to give you a little bit of this right here. All right. Thanks, Jake. And I made a mess. That's right. I got paper towels for you. Boom. All right. Thanks for bringing the paper towels, Mikey. Anytime you're around. All right. Put them in my pocket. Here we go. All right. 
Let's play your let's play our flavors. Play your flavor. Play your flavors. It smells pretty good. It smells more body. It it smells not as sweet. It has a little more body to it. Um interesting. I'm not sure what I'm getting. It is I'm getting the same strawberry. However, it is muted. It's not as pronounced. It's almost like, I mean, it's, you can still tell that it's a good coffee, but it's like a long ways away. Like it's through the mist. Ooh. Like it's over there on that side of it's the like water. It's like calling you from the distance. It's calling me from the distance saying, play your flavors. Hmm. It is a little hot still though. So I think it doesn't cool as much with this guy. Stayed a little hotter. It stays a little hotter. It even says on it, hot caution. You're going to get a hotter, because it's not exposed to the elements as much. I mean, you yeah. pour it in there and then boom, so it stays hot. So I'd like to like to see if it, the flavors increase as they cool a little bit here. But also, it's a little flat bed. It's a little tiny cup. It's, you know, it's yeah. just a different brew method. It is. Well, it's designed to be easy, quick, simple, something you can take with you. And it was easy, simple, and quick, and oh, a little, little noisy. Oh, we lost picture. All right. So, so I would imagine with your video editing, we are back again. <laughs> Whoopsie. Um, I agree with you. I think, you know, all honesty, I'm surprised at how good it is. I mean, it's still a decent cup of coffee. I think if you're trying to make something quick. Um, um, and- there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I would say you, you are going to be best served if you are... If you use K-cups, also if you, you know, if you do cream and sugar, because right away I'm seeing some of the dregs in the cup itself. Mm-hmm. So you're going to get a dirtier cup because it's a little metal basket, a little metal, metal filter. Yeah. You're not going to get as clean a cup as the Phoenix, as the Hario V60, as mm-hmm. the Chemex. So the flavors that you're going to get for uh, a natural or a honey, or some of these stone fruits and things like that, you're not going to get them to the same degree. However, kind of the nutty, full-bodied coffees, yeah. I could see them doing better in this. Suited so it for that. gives you a little bit more like a French press type of I would agree. flavor profile. Yeah, here. I mean, there's not, if you just kind of, you know, I'm swirling it around, I'm not getting anything left, but I could certainly see the finer. Well, I was swirling it and drinking it. Keeping it mixed the whole time. Well, I think mine has the bottom portion. Oh, because we split it. We yeah, split it. yeah. You've got more than I do. Yeah. Good. So there you have Still it. Good. Still so good. what do you think, Jake? Oh. All right, let's give let's give the breakdown. Uh, first off, the coffee. What do you rate the coffee? Okay. Good. Um, I think the coffee's wonderful. I think it's right up there. I would give it four and a half out of five. I think. What, what would what would make it a five out of five? Well, that's what I was going to say. I think what's lacking is um, I would like a little bit more strawberry. I would like a little bit more berry flavor. Okay. Um, I think just because that's kind of the forward, the main proponent, right? The main flavor uh, descriptor. Um, but the honey sweetness is there. And I even yeah. got a little bit of the, the tart, the kiwi I, in the aftertaste. I picked up on that. Um, but it's very strong. So four and a half. All right, four and a half. Packaging, everything, presentation, you know, it's just great. For this price point, maybe a little high. You know, I think I've had coffee that's similar, that's not quite as expensive. Um, but I think it brewed well in the in the Phoenix, and it did fairly well in the um, in the player for flavor device. It's, it's pricey. The it's Barsetto. pricey. There's no doubt about it. it. Does that play into how many cacti we give it? You know what I mean? The cost? Well, is value part of the assessment? Overall value? You have flavor, you have presentation, and you have yeah. value. Yeah. Is it worth it? Yeah. I mean, this, you know, could you recommend, hey, go out and drop 18 bucks on eight ounces? You know, it, w- would you recommend that? I, at least once because of the Christmas in the mail experience that I got from opening it. It was exciting. It was fun. Um, well, there you go. The flavors so were So for fantastic. you, the value was there. Well... But then when I see like the cost, like because I had no idea what what it cost because it was yeah. a gift. Yeah. Well, things it it makes me want to drop it down a little bit to four, just because the 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 total you know 
total everything involved. Yeah. But the coffee itself, I wanted to give it a five. You know, I, mm. I thought it was fantastic. I think we have I to factor in cost. A, I thought it was a fantastic representation of what a honey processed yeah. coffee should taste like. Yeah, I agree. And for that, I wanted to give it five out of five. For the the presentation, the wow, the packaging, I wanted to give it five out of five. Um, but for the price point, I was, you, you know, I was like, wow, that's a little, little, I mean, so what would you give it for price point? So let's just break it down by category. I don't know, maybe a three. So you give it a five out of five and yeah. two out of the three categories Yeah. and value you yeah. give it overall value. Yeah. So 13 out of 15. Yeah. Or just by category, Yeah. Uh, you know, however you want to take it. So yeah, that's what I think. What brew method did you prefer? Uh, there to me there was no comparison no comparison no the phoenix is Did, is by far superior the the the, the phoenix i would give um yeah what do you think of the phoenix well i haven't used it so just my initial sure it would be a four out of five because of the little hangy because because my filter hangs low you know what i mean because mm. my filter hangs a little too low that's why I would that's why I would dock it. That's why I don't think it's the perfect dripper. No. Um everything else is beautiful about it. It's the not the box cheapest that either. It comes in. Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe maybe three. I don't know. Well, I think what's I five out of five? Is the Hario V sixty the little know. plastic one that's that costs five Well bucks? that's why you gotta break it down. It's you gotta, tough. Do you think it functions well? Yes. Okay, so for its functionality, do you think it produces a nice cup? Yes. It's probably right up there, four or five. It yes. does exactly, I think, right yes. with the filters, what it claims yes. to do. Um, what about aesthetics then? Beautiful. And the delivery when it came in the box. You didn't get to see all of that, but yeah. I can tell you the aesthetics were on point. Except for the filibuster was late. They delivered. The filibuster was late, um, but when it showed up, it was great. It was great. So I think then you have the overall value category, which factors in price, functionality, um, you know, daily ease of use, everything, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of the practical functionality yeah. uh, of the device. I think with the filibuster, it, it's high because it, that's exactly how it's designed. You can make a, you know, a nice good amount of coffee and then kind of just uh, pour it as you need it. Yeah. Um, by the cup, not, you know, if you want less pieces, if you don't want to have to wash out but a decanter. But you have to buy the filibuster as well. You have to have some now type of decanter. Money. You some have type. to buy it. Yeah. You have to buy more. You can't just buy the $5 Hario plastic dripper and be done with it. Exactly. You got to buy more. So in that category, just know that. Maybe it knocks it down a little bit. Yeah. So but so these are highfalutin products here. Highfalutin. Highfalutin. I don't know. They're pretty popular. Got a lot of followers on the Instagram. And speaking of highfalutin, the the Barsetto Tripresso is not cheap. Was it run? I think. Like 80 bucks? No. It's yeah. cheaper than that. No, it's not. It was on. It was eighty. I think it's on sale for sixty now. Okay. So. So between sixty and eighty, depending. So on between sixty and eighty. What but you see is is it is it it does what it um it does what it sets sets Use out your words. to do. <laughs> it does what they want it to do, which is brew a cup fairly 60 conveniently. Bucks. Sixty bucks for the Barsetto Travel Coffee Maker Portable Espresso Coffee Machine for hiking, camping, picnic, fishing. What else? Any, any type of other ways you would play your flavors. Yeah. So for me, I'm not initially drawn to it, but I think if you want something to go on all those mentioned activities yeah, and you have a way to bring hot water with you, you know, the big thing now. Some of these little portable things look like bongs. I'm just going to say that right now. It does not look like a bong. It does so not. I think that's a. I think the biggest competition in this space, though, is oh, instant. Is this, the this new one instant. with coffee cup? Sorry, with this steel tumbler. Oh, is seventy five. Okay, so a little more. Is seventy five. Yeah. Just know that. Just know that. Should we? Should we go Facebook Live right now and give it away to somebody? Give it away? Yeah. No. You want to keep it for a little while? No. Longer? If you're ready to, let's just tell them. What do you want them to do? I have no idea. If you're listening or watching and you would like this um there's two things you can do one is uh drop a comment in the youtube video let us know that you want it or just give us some engagement we'll enter any type of comment even if it's negative um you will reach out to you and see if you want it if you're just listening you don't check out the video 
um, maybe comment on the blog post. Just give yeah. some engagement. Say, hey, I want it or I like the show. I don't like the show. Um, simple. We want to reward those that are already listening. Just let us know you're listening by engaging just a little bit. And we'll uh, throw your name in the running for the uh, Barsetto. And we'll announce the winner on maybe the next Bruin Review. Let's try that. Yeah. Just made it up as we went. So each Bruin Review, if we have something to give away. We'll give it away. We'll give it away and we'll announce it on the next one. All right. If you want the Barsetto Tripresso, um, you can have it. It is, it's a cool little device. Yeah. And um, I think it does what it sets out to do. It sure does. It does it well. Yeah. Get you coffee on the go. And then that's its primary function. It's, it's not meant function. to be the high end pour over, you know, extract every uh, absolute flavor, but just give you a good, decent cup wherever you're at. But it's not cheap. I ain't cheap. But it's it will be cheap. for you if you 75. win. 75. Yeah. If you win this one. So thank you, Sandra, for this. And it's coming your way. Yeah. And thanks, uh, Jeremy, for the coffee. Thank you, Jeremy. Really appreciate it. We're probably going to finish it off today. today. Yep. Yep. Perfect. And um, thank you, St. Anthony's, for giving me the filibuster. Finally. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you bought it. They didn't oh. give it to you. You oh. bought it. Well, it showed up. It was a surprise. Yeah. I felt like, oh, look, they, look what they gave me. Surprise. Well, because I paid for it for so long ago, I forgot. You paid so for it for so long ago? Perfect. For, for, so, for yeah. so long, I paid it. <laughs> awesome. Can <laughs> we wrap this up it. now? Adios. Thanks, Mike. As always, you can find the show notes at orangecactuscoffee.com forward slash brew review four for this episode. If you haven't checked out the video version of it on YouTube, please do so. If you'd like us to review a specific coffee or brew word next, please hit us up in the comments on the show notes. And we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching, listening, both of them. <laughs>